Frankly, I'm not even 100% sure where to start with this one. Meet Adata's Spectrix D80 DDR4 memory. As they're calling it, the world's first RGB DDR4 memory with hybrid liquid air cooling system. Using a combination of a liquid heatsink and an aluminum heatsink to deliver effective thermal cooling. Water cooled memory? Welcome, my friends, to shit manufacturers say. This, this is water cooled memory. Throughout this video, Linus will refer to the liquid as water. This is inaccurate. The liquid is, in fact, 3M Novak. However, Linus is having some well-deserved time off making a vocal correction impossible. So, here I am. Rock you like a hurricane. Here I am. Rock you like a hurricane. Origin PC offers beautiful custom laptops and desktops, including their Evo 15S that weighs only 4.3 pounds, is under an inch thick, and features up to a smooth 144 hertz display with a GTX 1070 Max-Q. Be sure to check out their latest offerings at the link in the video description. Well, we're off to a good start. The shutdown button doesn't work. Brilliant. Who needs to shut down their computer anyway? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Now, I could just shard all over this stuff based on pure principles of cooling theory because I actually don't need to plug them in in order to know that the water cooling on them is really not doing anything. But I at least try to take manufacturers' claims somewhat seriously. I wanna give them every opportunity to prove me wrong here. So what I'm gonna do is devise an experiment. One thing's for sure, they look pretty cool other than that they have a red heat spreader on an RGB RAM module. On a more positive note, this is hours of fun. Look, there's a little bubble. Oh, this is interesting. It makes no meaningful thermal contact outside of it looks like this part of the spreader might go under there with the actual memory chips. Let's start, I guess, with the standard stuff then. Or no, let's make sure this stuff even boots up first. Show me the post. Yes. All right, now that we're booted up, let's go ahead and uh, press start on a stress system memory test. Hopefully our FLIR camera will tell us some interesting things about what's going on here. We can see the heat is clearly concentrated directly over the actual DRAM modules. The second thing that we can see is that my suspicion that there was some kind of contact between this medallion here and the water cooling at the top was probably not correct. It looks like the only places where heat is being transferred up into the top chamber are kind of over here, and I'm not sure why, and then kind of over here. So those are almost the same temperature as the spot directly over the chips. So you can see if we look directly over top of it, the water cooling portion is still quite cool. Okay, so after a few minutes of testing, our thermals have stabilized anywhere from around 47 to 50 degrees, depending on where exactly we're looking on the spreader here. But that's not that interesting, we were expecting that. What we did figure out that is interesting is why we're seeing those little centers of activity of thermal movement up here. That actually came from perusing a data that's very optimistic, by the way, diagram of how these modules work. So heat gets generated by these uh, DRAM packages right here with you so far. Then it gets, it, I don't know, it goes through these holes. I'm not sure what they're talking about, but there's a, there's a heat spreader here that then somehow theoretically heat up or something. Anyway, the point is, once the assembly is put together, there's an actual heat spreader portion here and here that's causing those hot zones on these sides. The reason this one doesn't work is because on a standard DDR4 memory module, there is no chip in the middle. So there's no heat for this to carry away. This is more efficient than this chunk of metal. So we're gonna go ahead and throw my regular test bench memory back in here and we'll compare against that. So we still need a few more minutes with our other memory modules here, but it looks like we're gonna end up somewhere in the 40 to 40 something mid range. 
So it took a little longer thanks to the additional thermal mass of these Trident Z modules, but we are back up to anywhere between about 50 degrees and 47 degrees, just like last time. So the rules of the game have not in fact changed. RAM doesn't really need cooling unless you're, you know, extreme overclocking it to break records and heat spreaders don't really do a whole lot for it, regardless of the design of them. So what conclusion can we draw about this thing then? I guess the best way I could describe it would be this. The water on the top of these RAM modules, it's not hurting anything. It's like homeopathic pills where they just contain basically nothing, but it's not helping anything. And as much as we love our friends over at A-Data, to say that it is water-cooled is about like it would be for me to say that this CPU, with a bubble of water on the middle of it, is water-cooled. Water does not inherently cool anything. You have to have surface area. That's why water cooling still needs radiators. That's why heat sinks need fins and not just heat pipes. Well, that whole thing was enlightening. Isn't learning fun? Brilliant.org sure thinks so. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like a computer scientist by diving in and doing things for yourself rather than just trying to passively learn from lectures and videos. They believe that a great education shows you how to solve new and unfamiliar problems by using critical reasoning skills. With that said, you do need a toolkit and a framework in order to work through things. Fortunately, they also provide you with that. So they'll take learning concepts, break them up into bite-sized pieces, present clear thinking in each part, and then build back up to an interesting conclusion. Head over to brilliant.org forward slash Linus Tech Tips and try it. You get 20% off at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, then, um, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. It's a sad time for all of us. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. I mean, to be very clear, you guys, it's not like it's bad memory. You could still buy it if you're into just like RGB memory with a cool bar on the top. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.